Hey all, I hope you're well. This is a little bit of a controversial video, um, but I thought let me just put it out there. I don't want arguments, I don't want emotion. It's really just to open up debate. And let's just open up a nice forum in which to discuss opinion and I think enough slating each other. So firstly I want to say I'm not an anti-vaxxer by any means. Okay. Have I been COVID vaccinated? No, I haven't. And I'll get to that now. So I think the first point that I want to make is that we do know that the vaccine um, reduces symptom severity. We see it. I'm not going to argue with that point. Absolutely see it. Especially in elderly, and that's 60 plus, and people with underlying conditions. Okay? So absolutely we're seeing a difference. In the, in the, in the lower age groups, there's not a massive difference between a vaccinated or unvaccinated individual as far as uh, uh, symptom severity goes. In actual fact, we're seeing that across the board. The older a person is, and the stats are showing that, the higher the risk category. And obviously with health issues, the higher the risk category as well. So the reason I actually put up this video is because somebody sent me an article uh, from one of the business newspapers saying that one of the corporates has mandated that uh, their 20,000 employees have to be vaccinated. And I'm like, well, that's just crazy. That's crazy. And before I left for overseas, one of my employees came up to me and said to me, the question was, please tell me you're not going to enforce vaccination in the company. And I said to her, absolutely not. What you decide to do from a health point of view is your decision. Our whole lives, we make decisions based around our own health. Whether we take the advice of a physician or we don't go to a physician, whatever we do every single day, we're in control of our own health. And I think that that's very vital and important to state. So I would never enforce that right of health decisions on anybody else, only on myself. It's up to me what I want to do to my own body. It's my body. Aside from that, I'm actually in Israel at the moment, which is one of the most vaccinated countries in the world. Close to 70% of the entire population has been vaccinated with two Pfizer shots. Um, in actual fact, that vaccination process started with a massive closure, and I was here in that period as well, which was um, January of this year, and they mass vaccinated the population through January, February into March, and a massive number of people were were vaccinated. But what happened was, is that came August, September, there was a massive wave of infections that hit the country again. So you're talking about a massive population that's vaccinated, and then you're talking about a huge wave of infections, even more so than the previous waves. How's that possible? I've seen a lot of people say on social media, I got vaccinated to protect the community. I don't believe that. I can't believe that. You can't get vaccinated to protect the community because being vaccinated doesn't stop you from contracting COVID. So it doesn't stop you from being a carrier and it certainly doesn't stop you from, from transmitting the virus onto somebody else. In actual fact, the research has shown that the viral load of an unvaccinated individual is on a par with a vaccinated individual they pretty much carry the same viral load, which means that the threat of spread is still there. So you're wondering why in a highly vaccinated country, why there's still such a spread. And it's quite simple, because you've got a ton of carriers out there that are probably more asymptomatic, because obviously it does lower symptom severity, the vaccine. And they're running around and not knowing that they're ill. And in this case, I know that for a fact, because there are a number of people that I work with here and some of them felt lethargy and fatigue and exhaustion for a number of weeks. And after running blood tests, figured out that they had a COVID infection. And, you know, once we had had that discussion with their doctors, it was confirmed that they had COVID infections. What did they do during the period that they had infections? They carried on training. Some of them were running 50 to 80 kilometers a week. Some of them were swimming, running and cycling. They just didn't know they were sick. They carried on going out to restaurants, to movie theaters. They carried on at work. They were carriers. They were under no comprehension whatsoever that they had contracted COVID. They just thought they were having an off day. 
It's not a bad thing actually, if you get COVID and you're having an off day, but the bottom line is, is that they become what we call a spreader. So does the vaccine stop the spread? It's very debatable. An unvaccinated person is gonna be symptomatic, or the chances are they'll be more symptomatic. They'll stay at home, just like a cold or a flu, because they're not gonna feel well, and they're not gonna go out. So from the time that they contract the illness, they're in isolation and they're not gonna infect anybody else. So does an unvaccinated person spread the virus more than a vaccinated person? I'm sorry, I'm in complete disagreement there. Definitely not. I think the vaccinated individual is the more dangerous one when it comes to the spread. Where the vaccine has shown to work, and this is irrefutable, is that it does lower symptom severity. So when somebody says to me, I got vaccinated because it's the right thing to do, <laughs> for who is it the right thing to do? Not for the community. You got vaccinated for yourself because you're afraid there's a lot of fear out there. You're afraid of contracting COVID. You don't know how your body is going to respond to the illness. And so you got vaccinated because you do not want to take a chance. And that's fine. I'm all for that. A lot of people don't understand their health status. I work with people all the time. I've got a, a background in, in blood chemistry and I, I analyze bloods on a regular basis. And people tell me they're healthy and the bloods say very differently. A lot of people tell me they're healthy and their sleeping patterns tell me differently and their, their daily food choices, their nutrition, everything tells me differently about the health status of an individual. And it doesn't just stop there. We can even talk about stresses, the kind of stress that a person's under. So health is all encompassing. And if you're not 100% sure about your health status, then maybe you don't want to take a chance. And again, based on age and health status, you wouldn't want to take a chance. So you get vaccinated to reduce symptom severity. Okay, so I'm going to push that aside now. Let's look at the other side of the coin. I contracted COVID. Millions of us across the globe have had COVID. We went through a symptomatic phase. Some were more severe than others. In my case, it was not severe. It was like an irritating cold. It wasn't pleasant. Um, I had eight days of symptoms. Probably ninth day, I was feeling okay again and I went for full bloods and my bloods were actually okay. Nothing to worry about. Uh, went to a cardiologist for a full checkup, full bill of health, went back to training and I was back to perfect health after a little bit of viral fatigue and I carried on with life. I had no lingering symptoms. I did treat that early infection of COVID very early on. So and, and this was in um, July 2020, so it was really in the beginning, uh, in the first wave. Um, treated it with what the doctor told me to treat it with, which was Ecotrin as a blood thinner, which we know is, can be a lifesaver, and, um, and a corticosteroids, and, and really that was it. Um, nothing really else. I didn't have any breathing issues. Um, I had muscle ache. I didn't have a fever. Um, I had headaches and it was a very irritating sort of kind of aggressive sinus infection but eventually it disappeared and the only thing that was left was the, the viral fatigue and maybe I'm blessed. The thing is is though for 30 years of my life I focused on my own health, I focused on strengthening my immune system, I focused on getting enough sleep every night, I focused on reducing my stress levels and I've put so much focus into it over 30 years because I fell ill in my early 20s and I never ever wanted to go back to that state again. And that's me, but I'm sure there's millions of people out there who have done the same. Anyway, carried on. And the scientists said that your COVID antibody is only going to last two to three months. And I'm like, that's crazy. I had a viral infection and you're already telling me that my body's own natural immune system is only going to, be able to fight off that infection for two to three months. That just didn't make sense to me because... From a physiological point of view, when somebody is infected with a virus, there is a DNA imprint which ultimately goes down into bone marrow plasma. So even regardless of T cell and B cell detection, there is a fighting mechanism that's always going to be there and it's in place. And that's a fact. You can ask any physician, that is a fact. So the question is, is how long is this immunity going to last? And it was a big debate. Once serology testing became available to us and I could test for COVID antibodies, I ran a test at month four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just ran so many 
to every month I ran a COVID antibody test. And I tested positive for COVID antibodies. The scientist said two, three months. My own testing, proper blood tests, proper blood tests in a laboratory at month 11 was still positive. So what does that tell me? That claim of science was dogmatic. It certainly wasn't pragmatic because they hadn't done the testing on the masses yet. And it's come to the forefront that, I mean, I know people who have tested positive for a lot longer. But regardless of T-cell and B-cell detection, etc., and running these IgG tests, we know that eventually you still have that fighting mechanism in place. The body never forgets. It will always remember. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that in August, well, beginning of August, late July, my stepson actually contracted his first COVID infection. And that was this year. It was just over a year to the date that I contracted my first COVID infection. He tested positive. <clears throat> he came home, isolated himself in his room, locked the door, and basically that was it. I'm putting myself into isolation. I don't want to infect anybody. And I thought to myself, well, that's just crazy. I wonder how many scientists have actually exposed themselves intentionally to the virus. I know there was a study in the UK where they were paying, I think, £2,000 to under 30s to go into a contained environment to be reinfected with COVID. I haven't seen any results of that research. I don't know if it was stopped. I don't know if it carried on. I don't even know what happened, but it just went quiet. In my case, I actually went, knocked on the door, and I said, no, 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 no. I'm exposing you to us. Bring the COVID everywhere. I don't care. Freaking cutlery, breathe across the house, do whatever. I want to be exposed to this virus again. And I did f fall ill. I had three days of sort of a sinus infection. It felt like a sinus infection when I felt ill. I spoke to the doctor. Um, it's a physician that I uh, really trust. Uh, and she knew about the status of a positive COVID household. And she suggested as a preventative measure go into a corticosteroid and go on to a antibiotic and it took me a lot of persuasion for me to go on to the antibiotic but because she was hitting me with a cortisone I thought to myself you know what I'd rather just take the antibiotic as a preventative because obviously there's some immune system suppression there and you don't want to take a chance on day four I felt absolutely fine absolutely fine <clears throat> I went and ran bloods, I made an appointment um, straight away, went and ran bloods, and I was back to training on day five. And I was perfect, and there were no issues. Was my ability to resist that exposure to the second COVID infection, due to the fact that I'd already had COVID and developed a natural antibody response? It's debatable, but I can pretty much guarantee that that was the reason. Absolutely, that was the reason. What other reason would there be? I'd had COVID already and I'd been exposed a second time and I managed to fight it off. Very, very mild symptoms. That showed me exactly uh, what the power of natural immunity can do. And somebody said to me, you're crazy. It's like taking a shotgun and cleaning your teeth. That's an individual that hadn't even had a first COVID infection. So that's more of a fear comment than anything else. I wasn't scared because I'd already been through it once. And when I first got COVID the first time, I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't. So I'm going to be open and honest. I was nervous. But I'm not nervous anymore because I've been through it and I'm very happy with the way my body responded to it. Not just once, but even a second time. And if there's a third time, so be it. So as far as my vaccination status goes, no. Why? I don't trust the vaccine. I do not trust the vaccine in its current state. A vaccine that only that loses efficacy after five or six months and then needs a third shot and now they're speaking of a fourth shot? Thank you very much. But I won't be part of your global experiment. And for those of you that choose to be part of the global experiment, I would never fight you and I'd never argue with you. But the stats speak for themselves. So I wanted to say this up front because in a lot of countries they're not recognizing natural immunity. South Africa hasn't even spoken about natural immunity which is quite mind-boggling. I don't know what's happened there but 
Either doctors are scared of voicing their opinions, but if you aren't, then please physicians, doctors, scientists, come out and speak about it, because all I'm hearing is about mandatory vaccination. My daughter works in healthcare in Israel, okay? And one of the interesting things is that if you have recovered from COVID in Israel, you automatically get a green passport. You are recognized as if you were a vaccinated individual. You're not allowed to get the vaccine in this country until you have been six months post your recovery. And when you do get the vaccine, if you choose to get the vaccine, you are only allowed one shot of that vaccine. You are not allowed two shots. One. So, as much as they're at the forefront of the vaccination process and they've moved to the third shot, why is it that a country that is technologically advanced is recognizing natural immunity and not allowing a double vaccination shot after recovery process and also only six months afterwards. So I think that that's a very important question. And it's a question that I'm posing to any government on this planet as to why you're not doing enough to try and recognize natural immunity, especially when millions and millions of people have been infected with COVID and you don't know what that is going to do from a herd immunity perspective. Furthermore, the research that Tel Aviv University did, and that was on a huge data segment, a huge data segment, a large number of the population, as to what protection natural immunity offers against two shots of the Pfizer vaccine, they came out with a statement saying that anybody that had two shots of Pfizer was 13 times at greater risk of contracting COVID than those people that had had a prior infection. 13 times. So if that's the case, why is a prior infection being pushed aside? That's research. The Cleveland research report came out in a smaller data segment and they also said exactly the same thing. That the viral load of a vaccinated and unvaccinated individual is similar. The chances of a reinfection from a recovered individual is way, way lower than that of a vaccinated individual. So that's two research studies and I don't understand why it's just being pushed aside. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Anyway, to end this video, I'm just going to say this. Government officials, health ministers corporate management, do not discount this huge percentage of the population that has contracted COVID and is refusing to get vaccinated. Do not discount the power of natural immunity. There's no evidence that the vaccine is more effective than natural immunity. To the contrary, it's shown that natural immunity at the moment is more effective than the vaccine. So, I won't stand for a vaccination mandate on people that have contracted COVID and recovered from it. And unless you can prove otherwise, I'm not going to change my stance point. And by the way, if I'm wrong, and you can prove me wrong, I will humbly admit it. If I think the vaccine is better for me than being exposed to COVID again, with natural antibodies and a form of natural immunity, then I'll be the first in line. But I need to see that evidence. And so far, it seems that science has become very, very lazy and no one wants to talk about the power of natural immunity. That's how I'm going to finish it. It's completely up to you what you do with your own bodies. If you are a healthy individual and you have had COVID and you got through it, great. If you're an unhealthy individual, you've got underlying conditions, or you're nervous about contracting COVID and want to get vaccinated, great. I don't think any judgment should be passed on any individual. It's completely up to all of us to decide what we think is in the best interests of our own bodies, our own health, and I only wish you all well.